January 2010. I'm alone in the living room, CNN muted, shameless politicians lip syncing across the screen, a sweating glass of Jim Beam in my hand, and the most depressing Leonard Cohn song ever composed, <laughs> Sisters of Mercy, playing in my head. With each passing moment, I am sinking deeper into the couch, glassy-eyed, worrying about one kid and then another, and then another, until I am sure all seven are doomed. And then I start obsessing about work, about unpaid property taxes, my wife coughing upstairs through a rib-breaking pneumonia when my daughter Addie phones to say she's in labor. Her fourth, our 15th grandchild. Forgive the Laura Nero reconstruction. One more high chair at the long table. One more life-giving breath of that luscious baby scent. One more round of she'll be coming round the mountain. <laughs> and then emerging from the recesses of a misspent youth, I'm humming shades of blue, 1964, so in love. I mean, thank the stars for babies. They make your heart sing. So I kiss my teary wife goodbye, first birth she's missed, hop in the car, the dark clouds part, the giant moon rises big as a pizza pie. That's amore. <laughs> and I drive off to Yale, New Haven, cranking up white snakes. Here I go again. And with that ancient eight track calling me back in time and circumstance, 2010 soon enough becomes 1987. And I am picking up Addie and her friend Tiffany from Andy B's 13th birthday party. Think Moni Moni by Billy Idol. They jump in the back of the van again, and I ask nonchalantly, like the cool dad that I am, if they had a groovy time. <laughs> it was great, says the familiar snarky voice I know so well, followed by a three-second pause. We played spin the bottle. <laughs> Tiffany squeals and giggles hand over mouth while I go into my Zen dad mode. Take a deep cleansing breath, Pop. Don't forget to stop at the stop sign. Say, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice, <laughs> I say in my coolest Lou Reed monotone. Yeah, she says, waiting for me to glance in the rearview mirror, her eyes big, beautiful, and sparkling blue, mine, murky green. Then she adds with a smirk, and I tried French kissing. <laughs> Judging by the snorting and honking coming out of Tiffany, I figure she's seconds away from peeing on my new Naugahyde bench seat. And then, in the otherworldly silence, expertly choreographed by my impertinent daughter, Addie adds, three seconds later, but I didn't like it. <laughs> the eight-track memory tape clicks and stops there. So, clock on the wall, spinning ahead like in 1940s movie musicals, I am back in the more recent past tense, driving off to Connecticut, now thinking about how life was often like that, and more, with the beautiful, vivacious, contentious, outrageous Adeline. By the time I arrive at Yale New Haven, Marguerite Lily Pietrasante, six pounds, 15 ounces, has already had her first yowl and is cradled in her mother's beautiful arms. As I glance down through my own tears of joy, I see is it possible? Is it really possible? A smirk on that gorgeous, tiny, one-hour-old face? I don't know. But suddenly, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir is belting out amen through the hospital PA system. A troop of tap-dancing orderlies bursts through the door, followed by the masked, 
OBGYN waltz team, while two twirling nurses pull back the curtains to reveal a shimmering hologram of Julie Andrews and the entire Von Trapp family, the Connecticut Hills alive with the sound of musical karma. 